Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. In this blog, we'll look at part two of the Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks presented at Solid Edge University for 2024. Part one of this presentation was presented in the previous blog. Tips and Tricks number seven, Art and Sheet Metal Custom Base Feature Templates. Custom base feature templates are ideal for when you always start with a similar feature, a specific material, or set gauges. For example, your company may only design with a 12 gauge, 14 gauge, or 16 gauge steel. You could set up a template for each gauge, which would save you the time of having to define it in each template. Base feature templates can save design start time by eliminating repetitive tasks, ensure design consistency, and can be saved by individual users or at a company server level. To save a base feature as a template, you open your default template and create your base feature. You then save this file in a template designated folder. If you do not know what a template designated folder is, please coordinate with your system's administrator or manager before attempting this, or contact Design Fusion TechLine for assistance. Once you've created this template, you can use it to create a series of new files. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. To create a base feature template, you have to start from a part or sheet metal template depending what kind of base feature you're creating and then you create your base feature. Let's assume that I manufactured something that required several different size boards or panels. So here I'll create the base feature for my first board. And for clarity's sake, I can reposition my dimensions. And I'll assign a material to this. For this to behave like a template, I must save it in my template folder. I'll use the save as command, and I'll browse to my template folder. Please check with your systems administrator before attempting this, because your template folder may not be in this location. Here I'm going to go to Program Files, Siemens, Solid Edge 2024, the template folder, and I've created a folder in here called My Custom Templates. In this folder, I'm going to give this a somewhat intelligent name. For example, I'll call this Standard Shelf Template. And then I'll save this. Now, before I save this, I may want to add something else. Let's call this Standard Oak Shelf Template and click Save. Remember, this is important that you save it in a designated template folder. If you don't know what that is, contact your system administrator or contact our technical support line. Now that we've saved this, let's close this. And to access this, we go to our New tab, select the New Command. I can browse to My Custom Templates, and I can select my Solid Oak Shelf Template and click OK. I can then modify the dimensions for the specific size base feature that I require.
Once I've made the modifications, I click Save. Now because this was saved in a designated template folder, it prompts me for a location and a name. I'll just assign this to a folder and give it a name. And then save it. I can add additional features if needed, but I've created this part off of my base feature template. If I return to the custom template folder that I created, you'll notice that my original template is still there. I've also created different sheet metal base feature templates here, and I've created one for each of the three most common gauges that I would use. As an example, I'll open my 14 gauge sheet metal template. Notice the materials assigned, the gauge properties are also pre assigned, and I just have to change the tab dimensions to start with my base tab. If you do a lot of similar modeling, base feature templates can save you a lot of time. Tips and tricks number eight assembly patterning with user defined patterns. It's somewhat surprising to me that a number of users are unaware of the fact that the holes they place using the hole wizard command form a user-defined pattern. For example, I place these six holes on the plate shown here on the slide while in the hole command, and this has created a user-defined pattern. This user-defined pattern can now be used to place fasteners and components at the assembly level. This slide reviews the steps for the patterning command at the assembly level that you should have learned in fundamental training. You first select the part or parts that you wish to pattern. Then you select the part containing the pattern feature. Then you select the pattern feature. Then you identify the reference feature or starting point of the pattern. And then you click finish and the pattern of parts is created. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. Here we have this partially assembled component, and you'll notice that each plate has a hole pattern in it. So let's edit into the plate and have a look at this hole pattern. You'll notice that all we have here is a tab feature and a hole feature. This hole feature consists of six holes and you can see them highlighted and positioned on the tab. Because we've placed these holes using the hole command, it created a user-defined pattern that we can use at the assembly level. Back in the assembly, I've already positioned the support pin in the middle and the two screws on either side. For clarity purposes, I've colored these. To rapidly position these components, I'll select the Assembly Pattern command. I first select the components that I wish to be patterned, and I then accept them. I then identify the part that contains the pattern that I want to use, and then I select the pattern. In this case, I'm going to select one of the holes and I then select the hole where the components are starting from. I then get a preview of what the finished pattern will look like. I click Finish to accept it, and you can see how quickly I position these fasteners and components using the user-defined pattern defined when I created my holes at the part level. Tips and tricks number 9 and number 10. Inner part copy command plus the thicken command. The inner part copy command allows geometry from one part or sheet metal file to control the geometry in another part or sheet metal file. This is only available when editing the part in the context of an assembly by in place activation or create in place. The inner part copy command creates link construction surfaces which drive creation of new geometry. These link construction surfaces are copies of selected faces from underlying components as shown in this slide. 
A quick way to turn these construction surfaces into a solid is to use the thicken command. The thicken command adds material to a face of a model or thickens a surface into a solid. In the following demonstration, I'll show you how these two commands can be combined to speed up the modeling process. In this example, we've been instructed to add two flanges between these end caps to prevent leakage. The flanges will be one millimeter thick, so I'll adjust my mate relationship and apply a one millimeter offset. I'll repeat this process on the second end cap. You can see the slight gap between the end caps and the main body. I want the flange to be part of the end cap subassembly, so I'll edit into the end cap subassembly. For clarity, I'll hide the underlying components, leaving just the end cap subassembly components. To create the flange, I'll use the create and place command. This command is taught in the fundamental course, so you should be familiar with it. I'll use the default settings and I'll use the isometric part template. And then I'm going to give this a name and we'll call it flange. Once I hit save, this will open a new part file under the name of flange with inside the assembly. I want the flange to match one of the faces in my end cap subassembly. To do this, I'll turn on the underlying components and I'll select the inner part copy command from my home tab. I select the part that I want to copy the face from, and then I select the face that I want to copy and accept it. A surface is created from that face and I can hide the underlying components again, leaving just the inner part copy surface in my part file. The quickest way to turn a surface into a solid is to use the thicken command found on the Add Material Flyout menu. Once launched, you're prompted to select a face, in this case the surface, enter in a thickness value, in this case one millimeter, select the direction of the thickness and click. The surface has now become a solid, and I'll use my part painter to apply the black color to my flange. Once I've painted my part, I'll close and return to the subassembly. And you'll notice that the flange is a perfect fit for this part. I'll then close and return back to the top level assembly and you can see that my two flanges have been placed perfectly. As you have seen, the inner part copy and thickness command work very well together. Tips and tricks number 11, annotation symbols. The symbol and values dialog can be displayed from many of the dialogs in the draft environment as listed here on this slide. This dialog contains many symbols that users require for their draft documentation. These symbols are grouped in different categories in this dialog. So let's have a look at one example of how this can be useful in Solid Edge. As an example of using annotation symbols, I'll use the callout command to place a centerline symbol. In the callout dialog, I'll select the symbol and values icon. This gives me access to the symbol and values dialog where we have numerous symbols that you can access. Notice they're all categorized, such as material conditions, tolerance zones, and so forth. The centerline symbol is found under the other symbols header. In fact, it's the first in that group. To use this, you highlight it, click the select button so that the symbol appears in the preview window, and then you click OK. Now that it's in my callout, I can actually save this, and I'll call this centerline. 
and then I'll click Save. I can then quickly recall this for future draft documents. With my leaders turned off, I can now place this centerline symbol wherever I see fit. This is just one example where the annotation symbols can be quite helpful. Tips and tricks number 12, copy attributes command. Dimension styles can be copied from one dimension to another using the copy attributes command. Users can also copy a prefix and a type using this command. This is quite useful when modifying or editing a draft view. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. In this example, I wish to change the style of these dimensions. To do this, I'll right click on the first dimension and select properties from the shortcut menu. I'll make a modification to the style. Let's make this a horizontal pullout. And then I'll apply and click OK. Instead of having to repeat this on the other dimensions, I can use the copy attributes command. This command allows me to copy the style, type, or prefix and type from one dimension to another. I'll use the style setting, select this dimension, then click on the other two, and you can see the results. A very useful command when you're trying to match dimension type, styles, or prefix. And the final tip in our baker's dozen of tips and tricks is the isolate command. The isolate command provides you an easy way to see just the part or parts you want to see in the assembly environment. This is similar to the show only command, but it provides you with a convenient rollback to the previous display state. To use this command, you select the part or parts that you want to display, and then right mouse button click and select the isolate command. Only the selected parts will then be displayed along with two icons on the screen, one to restore the view and the other to dismiss the isolate command. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. Hopefully you're all aware of configurations. The only problem with configurations is they do take some time to set up. And if you just want to isolate a specific part, for example, instead of creating a configuration, you can select the part and then select the isolate command. This will show only the part or parts or subassembly that you've selected. It also places two icons on the screen. One allows you to restore the isolate, which takes you back to your previous view. Or you can select Dismiss Isolate, which will leave you in this view with all the other components hidden. I'll turn my All configuration back on, and you can use this Isolate command on any part or parts or subassembly at any level in the assembly. A very useful command when working with assemblies. This completes the Baker's Dozen of Solid Edge Tips and Tricks for Solid Edge University 2024. If you want to learn more, check out our online training page at the webpage listed on this slide. Or if you need technical support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.